we all want to harness the benefits of strength training so we can become stronger and faster. And all those gains don't just come from riding the bike. You can improve your cycling and crucially, injury prevention by adding a strength session into your routine. The question is, what exercises do you need to do? Now, in order to give you the best possible advice, I've roped in personal trainer here at Stands of Fitness, my good friend Carl. You ready, bro? Hello, mate. How are you? Oh, mate, good. Now, we've got some cycling-specific fitness exercises for you guys at home, and the first one is what? A Bulgarian split squat. Let's get into it. The Bulgarian split squat. How does it work? Right then, guys, so what we're looking to do is we're going to work one leg at a time. So you'll have your foot, your rear foot, elevated just on the back there, and we're going to load up the front foot. This is going to be the working leg, and you're going to break from the knees and the hips, gently descend down, keep your weight over this foot here, and then drive back up. So, Hank, if you can just come in for me. So give yourself a little bit of space, that's right. So this is the working leg, that's the one that we're going to prioritise. So it's a unilateral exercise, working the glutes, hamstrings, quads. So you're going to gently descend down and then drive back up. With this, we're looking for around about six to eight reps. And you can, if you want to, load it up. So you can hold something in a front wrap position. You can also hold something, two dumbbells, one in each hand. How's that feel? It's getting there. Yeah, let's see it. You can definitely build your way up though, can't you, by adding weight, because just, even just body weight's enough for me. Absolutely, for the most part, people, if you're gen pop, looking to get into building a little bit of strength for your cycling, body weight will do, but there's gonna be some point where you need to add in a progression, so adding load will be a necessity. Lovely, so once you've done six to eight on one leg, we need to match this and work on the other side. Typically, we do unilateral exercises so that we can build up strength and power in both sides because you might do other exercises like a squat, which is a little bit difficult to just pick out one item over the other. Nice, mate. Good balance as well. So when you're on one leg at a time, there's challenge in Hank's balance and stability here, which is an important factor. You look like you've done this before. <laughs> Okay, guys, so when we come to loading yourselves up, which will be the natural progression from doing things body weight, we're going to grab either a dumbbell or a kettlebell. So one option could be that you will hold the load in a front wrap position, keeping it close to your chest just there, or going opposite to the working leg, just gently descending down here and then pushing back up. If you want to increase the weight again, you can hold two or just go up in weight. Next up, the deadlift. Okay, so let's move on to the deadlift. Um, deadlifting is a brilliant exercise if you're short of time and you want to get as much out of your session as possible because it target, targets so many muscle groups, um, both building strength, muscle, and also mobility. So if you are working from home and you have limited resources, you may have a kettlebell, you can get away with doing a deadlift on this, although there will be limitations in terms of your progression because you'll only have the weight that you actually have at home. And what we're looking to do with this is basically have your barbell, which could range from 20 to 15 kg, and then stack some plates on the side. And we're gonna be doing a hinging movement now. So this typically work in your posterior chain, which is the back of your body. Okay, so we've got Hank here, setting off with his barbell deadlifts. Rep range, we're looking for around about six to eight reps. As you can see with his stance of his feet, they're fairly close together. He wants his elbows on the outside of his body, and we're trying to keep the bar nice and close to the shins. As he's going down, he's setting himself up, keeping his bum slightly high, so that he feels the stretch in the hamstrings, creating a nice flat back, and then looking at the floor in front of him. We're trying to create a nice neutral spine, and then when you take off here, push your feet through the floor, snap your hips forwards, hold, and then just repeat as you go back down, descending under control to the floor. We'll get people doing deadlifts because, as I say, it works lots of areas of the body all in one hit. So if you're short of time and you can only get in and do a few exercises, deadlifting is a really good core staple movement. It helps build strength, 
resilience and also robustness for when you're on your bike, which is also going to help you prevent yourself from getting things like injuries and obviously creating performance things like power and strength. How you doing there, mate? All right? I'm getting hot now. So with this one, again, you just want to take your time with it. Don't let your ego get in the way. You need to just move steadily through the loads. We've talked again about things like reps and weights. Typically with this, I'd aim for around about six to eight reps. And if you want to progress it, just go up in small increments. So maybe even just a kg each side. Don't let your ego get involved with what everybody else is doing in the gym. Just small increments and stay in your own lane with your progression. Good luck. <laughs> Well then guys, so what we're going to do now is another unilateral exercise for your lower body. So we're going to do a reverse lunge and start out, I'm just going to demo it in terms of body weight. So we're going to have a feet together, we're just going to then keep, this is our loaded up leg, drop down, keep the weight over this leg and then drive back up. What I'd advocate is that you do one at a time, so we're going to do six to eight reps on one leg and then once you've done that, switch over and do six to eight on the other. With this, we're just gonna have the option as well, as we have shown with the other exercises, to basically load yourself up. So I'm gonna use something that's a bit uncomfortable, a bit kind of challenging to hold on, and I'm gonna have this D-ball in the front wrap position, so it's working my core as well. So again, keeping the load over the front leg, gently descending, and then back up there. You can use a dumbbell or kettlebell, but these are pretty good just to give you a variation and a change of stimulus. It's my turn. <laughs> right, here goes nothing. Lovely, so with these unilateral exercises, what we have the opportunity to do is work one side at a time because you may have better balance on one leg over the other or you might be stronger on one side over the other. So when you're cycling, you're trying to create equal power with your pedal strokes. So we want to make sure that that is the case with our legs and that we're training them equally. So with this as well, he's in an unstable position because he's got the ball. So that's going to be working his core, his trunk, which is also important for us to have a good position when we're cycling. We want to have a good position, helps with generating power, and we'll be able to ride for longer if we can hold those positions for longer. Oh, he's doing good. Tell you what, guys, this will tie you out. Go on, yeah. that's it, lovely. Okay guys, so we're gonna move on to the leg press, which will typically be at a gym. You're not gonna see this, I don't think for the most part, in somebody's um, house. The leg press is a lower body exercise. It's quite low entry and low risk in terms of using. Um, sometimes a squat might be a little bit more um, challenging to maintain positions, um, or if you've got any kind of like injuries that you need to work around, the leg press can be quite a good option. Um, so I'm just gonna talk you through how we use this one. This is a pretty standard one. You would load up the plates either side. We'll just hop into it here. With this, think about your feet going in a similar position to where you would squat. So for me, this would be where my feet would be placed when I'm squatting. I'm just gonna drive the machine up ever so slightly, and then you'll have on most mechanisms some sort of handle that you push out that allows the sledge to come back to you. So with this, we wanna pull ourselves in, get nice and tight, and then allow our knees to track gently towards our chest, get a good range of movement, and then drive your feet away. And that is pretty much it for the leg press. As always, doing it for around about six to eight reps at the moment, and just a nice controlled movement. One, two, three, one, two, three in terms of timing. Okay, Hank, so gently back with your knees, nice and steady, that's it, driving away. Try not to, with this one as well, we don't want to lock out the knees. We come to soft knees and then down, one, two, three tempo, one, two, three back up. So with this one, we're working the quads, glutes and hamstrings. And with it as well, like I say, where it's kind of like a low entry machine and it's not as complicated as a multi-joint movement like a squat, if you have any back issues or any kind of niggles, we can get somebody into quite a safe position whilst doing this, but still either fixing that injury um, and building strength and power through using the machine. It does look quite scary, but I think when you get into it, 
It's, it's a, actually one of the easier yeah, exercises. Yeah, it's a big piece of kit, um, granted. You have to respect all of the kit and the exercises that you do. But if you just take it steady on the way down, I would say if you're working to six to eight and you're getting close to failure, rack it in. Don't try to get to failure because you're going to put yourself in a bit of a predicament and uh, it's not safe. So just, you know, get into that threshold and then just racking it in. Nice, Hank. Beautiful. Okay, so the next movement we're going to go on to is a kettlebell swing. So with this, we're again working your posterior chain similar to what we are doing with the deadlift, but it's a nice explosive exercise that has a big ballistic movement to it and can work, again, the posterior chain and also your power when you're doing the movements. So with this, we're going to go get a kettlebell that's adequate for yourself, stand just over shoulder width apart, and we're going to put the kettlebell just out in front of you. So I'm going to stick my hips to the back of the room, chest to the floor, and create this tripod area here. And then I'm going to drag the kettlebell back and then nudge my hips into the kettlebell, allowing the kettlebell to fall. And as it drops down and I get it between my legs, I snap my hips forwards. As we're doing this, we're trying to maintain a nice neutral spine, making sure it's the hips that are doing the work as we snap forwards. So we can be nice and controlled on the way down and then nice and ballistic, using lots of power, snapping the kettlebell forward. Right, Hank, so let's maintain that three-point position and then drag the kettlebell back and as it comes back, then you snap your hips in. Excellent, that's it. So with this variation, I just need the kettlebell to come around about here. You don't need to push it up any further. We just want to get that focus of you sticking your hips to the back of the room and then snapping in. This is a good exercise to help generate power and increase your power throughout your body. It helps build up as well, good mobility and strength as you increase the weights and your intensity as you're doing it. How are you feeling, Hank, all right? Let's get another it takes 20 a while out of you. just to get yeah. into the rhythm. Yeah, rhythm's a good way of describing it. You want to be quite fluid with this. We don't want to be too stiff and locked up. There needs to be a nice flow between you and the kettlebell as it descends down and then you snap your hips forwards. Okay, so another movement that we're going to have a look at is a step up. And this can be done in multiple different ways. One of the good things about step up is you could actually do it at home. You may have something of a similar height, even a garden wall outside. But especially when you're in gym, it's still an important one to focus on. We will be working one leg at a time. So that's something that we've mentioned. You know, when you have imbalances, it's important to just isolate so that you can work on that particular area. So what we need is a bench around about this height, or if you have a plyo box, that would be also good. So we'll just demo it body weight. We'll have one leg at a time. And what we're aiming to do is load that front leg up. Try to get the glute just here below the knee for a good range of movement. And I'm just gonna focus on pushing up off this leg, not the rear leg. Drive through the bench or the step that you're on and then gently put the brakes on and descend under control. And as I'm doing this, it's not this rear leg that's helping me go up, it's just this front leg. So again, I'm just driving up, push my foot through the box or the bench and then gently descending back down. Through a lot of these exercises, I think a good rep range is around about six to eight. That's ideal. And then sets, you might be looking for around about three to four sets um, to get the right amount of stimulus. Good night. Yeah. Okay, so the next movement we're going to go on to will be a core exercise. I think we can all agree that sometimes our performance has dipped when we're out on a long ride because we can't maintain position and we're feeling out of sort. So when you're in this set position just here, our core, our trunk starts to fail and that will impact the actual performance of you being able to get a good rotation, good strength and power through the cranks. So it is important, most of the exercises we've done so far today are lower body to take care of our core in isolation. So this will help with you maintaining that position, good integrity so that for longer rides, you can stay out for longer, have fun riding and maintain these decent postural positions for you. So we're gonna do what's called a plank shoulder tap. So first of all, you can start off if you don't have any kit doing a shoulder tap like so. 
but because we're in a gym, we're just gonna progress it onto a plank pull through. So my shoulder is stacked over the wrist. We're gonna pull the weight through, so you can use a dumbbell or kettlebell. And this is gonna challenge you in terms of stability and strength and balance, which are all great things for the core and can be transferable to you when you're on the bike. Hank, let's have you. Right, Hank, so a bit of, a few cues. Go narrow with your hands, okay, and wide with your feet. So this gives you a good setup in terms of stability. And with the weight, you just want to make sure that it's quite close to your body to start out with, and then pulling it through over to, it, to me on this side here. That's it. So we're going to do 12 of these, pulling it through, and try not to rock too much through your hips, staying nice and stable with a nice flat back as Hank has. Lovely, how are you feeling with that? It looks. As I say, we're building up endurance in these positions, difficult positions, robustness and resilience. They're all good transferable things to keeping you out on the bike, long, riding longer and staying out there with your friends, having fun. Do you need heavy weight for this? Um, it's all relevant. So if you're somebody that's been doing it for a little bit of time, your weight will progress up. So I would say to everybody, don't have any ego. You know, you could go in there, we've got Hank doing an eight, but you might start off with a four. But it's all relevant to your level of fitness and strength. So start out low, and then gently as you progress, become more confident, then you'll go up. And you'll know this because <laughs> when you start pushing through the weight, you'll start finding, if I'm saying to you to do six to eight reps, you feel competent that you could probably do three or four more past that. If you do three or four more reps past the allocated amount, then it's probably time that you either Go up in weight or progress the exercise to something a bit more difficult. Come on, mate, keep going. I've got another five minutes of you doing this. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> so there you have it, some strength sessions to benefit your bike riding. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you for Carl, who's running through all the sessions. And hopefully, you're climbing, you're sprinting, and your speed on the bike will be even more powerful. Good luck.